various places around the world. So friends, please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to Dr. George Hill. Thank you. Well, praise God. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You're the honored guest in this place tonight. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence here tonight. Show yourself strong. Show yourself real, I pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen and Amen. Well, praise God. It's always great to be with Pastor Will and Barbie. They're tremendous encouragers, aren't they? Tremendous exhorters, and it's a wonderful time this weekend, you know, with them releasing the church to Pastor Michael, and tomorrow night is going to be set in, but I'm very excited about this. You know, and of course, they're doing it the right way. They really are. It's it's they're doing it the right way. Where you raise somebody up, and I know, I've, I've watched what they've done with Michael. They've brought him different places. They've really helped him in a whole variety of ways to give him the experiences he needs that will stretch him, enlarge him, and, uh, and bring him to the place where he'll be able to pastor this great church and build it bigger Amen. and greater and do an awful lot yeah. in here and from here. And so I'm very excited yeah. about it. I really am. You know? And for Will and Bobby, they're not just leaving this to go nowhere. They're going up to a position of apostolic, prophetic. They're going to be part of the fivefold ministry team that looks after this nation and a few other nations. And he worked together with the whole Victory Churches of the UK and Victory Churches International. Yeah. And I believe they're going to be in the right place too. So yeah. they are going to, their gifts are going to be express, expressed like never before. And so it's a win, win, win for everybody. And they're not leaving you. They're going to be backwards and forwards yeah. here continually. So they're not leaving you. They, they, they take you with them in their heart. But they'll also be back here as well yeah. to minister and check on you, make sure you're doing good. <laughs> so we have a great theme. It's unity, united in purpose. And I think that's a great theme for this weekend because how many know it's important to have unity? Yes, it's yes. important to be united about where you're going, what you're doing, and, uh, and then knowing how you're going to get there. And so I'm going to te- speak to you tonight on four areas of unity that guarantee success. Four areas of unity that guarantee success. The scripture I've got is Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27 where it says, Stand fast. The Apostle Paul said this, that whether I come and see you or I just hear about you, I want to hear this, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So one mind, one spirit, one purpose, striving together for the gospel of Christ. And so here you are, one mind, one spirit, one purpose. I tell you, when you get one mind, one spirit, one purpose, you're going to go somewhere. It's almost like now you are going to, you're going to be focused. Your attention's going to be focused on something and you'll be able to break through areas where you never could break through before. Yeah. Unity attracts and releases God's anointing and power. Division and strife repels it. Yeah. So what we've got to do is work to keep division and strife out. You know, let's be part of the solution, not part of the problem, yeah. right? I mean, hey, there's enough problems out there without them being in here. So let's, let's be part of the solution where we're going to work and, and strive and pray for unity and for harmony and for oneness so we can see the anointing and power of God on this church and even on your own life too. And then I put this little statement here. Teamwork and agreement is the place of power. Matthew 18, 19 and 20. It says, where two or more are gathered in my name. It says, there am I in the midst. I'll be there. Jesus said, I'll be there in the midst. If just two or three of you can agree on something, get the right purpose, agree on one of his purposes, he's going to be there in the midst to add his resources to your agreement. And that's when things really happen. It really is. And so, uh, and then of course, this other scripture in Psalm 133 verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And in the last verse of that passage, it says, There the Lord commanded the blessing. I tell you, when the Lord commands a blessing, there's, there's something that goes with There's an empowerment that goes with that. Yes. Not just a blessing, but there's an empowerment that comes upon you to be successful in what he's called you to do. Absolutely. Not yes. just successful in anything, but successful empowerment 
for, for, for what he has called you to do Amen. so you can be successful yeah. in that area. Whether it's business, politics, church, whatever it may be, he wants you to be successful in his purpose and his plan for your life. Praise God. Now, I'm going to give you those four areas of unity. Number one is unity of purpose. Unity of purpose. Uh, we have a common God-given purpose that's bigger than any one of us, bigger than any church, bigger than any country. We have a worldwide purpose, and it's really based on, on Habakkuk chapter 2. You know, Habakkuk chapter 2, remember what it says in verse 2, in verse 2 and verse 3? It says, that, I'll write the vision, make it plain, so they that read it can what? Run with it. And then, of course, in verse 14, you see what the vision was. It says, the whole earth shall be filled with what? The knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Not just the glory. It's the knowledge of the glory. I mean, somebody's got to get it out there. The whole earth filled with this gospel that was striving to see fulfilled. Amen. Take it all around the world. Yeah. The whole earth filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I tell you what, you need to know God's purpose and then get involved with it. Yeah. You know, it should be the driving force of every one of our lives. The purpose of God. What is the purpose of God for me? What's my place in it? What's the purpose of God for our church? What is the purpose of God for the church? Yep. And then find your place in it. You know, we in Victory have come up with our, our statement of purpose, which is, uh, it, it's a, this statement of purpose is, is basically, number one, is to reach every available person at every available time by every available means with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number two was to, to teach and train people to be disciples of Christ, to follow him yep. and to follow his ways. And number three is to mobilize the body of Christ, help every individual find their place and then fulfill the plan in their place yes. so that the body of Christ can be built up by what? By that which every joint supplies. I tell you, it's when you, it's when you start using the gifts you've got and supplying something to the body. I tell you, when you start supplying, that's when you feel connected. Yep. Not only that, but that's when you can receive too. It's a giving and receiving. Yeah, everybody's got something. Yes. Everybody in the body of Christ, God has gifted every one of us with something. Yes. We've just got to find out what it is, and then we have to use it to help build up the body of Christ. And I tell you what, it's a powerful way to live, a wonderful way to live. And so, you know, we have a, we have a vision that goes beyond. That's just our local church vision. For our, our national vision, it's to raise up and release five-fold ministry giftings and, and release them into Holy Spirit directed and empowered service. Yes. And then it's to, to plant church planting churches that are going to raise up leaders and churches. And then lastly, then it's to give oversight to churches planted. Then we have an international vision. And that is to, that is to, uh, to, to, to raise up fivefold ministry teams in every nation that we move into. And, and then from there, we, we, uh, we have an apostolic leader in each nation. And then together we plant church planting organizations all around the world. And so there is a vision that's a, it's a big vision. It's a good vision. It's a vision that goes beyond you and one that goes beyond me. And it's great to have a vision. You know, if you have a vision that's limited, it means you're going to be limited. The church is going to be limited. The body of Christ is going to be limited. But I tell you what, an unlimited vision. A vision that's national, regional, local, international, you know, multifaceted. is a powerful vision. It really is. You know, there's room for each and every one of us to, to, to be involved with our gifts. And, and, and it expanded as well. And so the vision is important. In fact, I talked the other night there with the team. And I was saying, you know, the, the vision and the purpose is the magnetic north. It's like, you know, a compass has on it a magnetic north. I tell you, that is the magnetic north of any organization, is their purpose. Their purpose and the magnetic north, it draws everything. When it's magnetic, it draws everything in that direction. And that's what you want. Amen. You want in your, if you're starting a business, you want the efforts of the people to be drawn towards that purpose. In church, we want, the, uh, we want the, the people to know the purpose, love the purpose, and be excited about the purpose, have it engage their, their mind, capture their imagination, and then draw them 
in the right direction. Pull us all together. Amen. You know, we're going somewhere together, aren't we? Yeah. The purpose defines where you're going. It tells you where you're going. Mm-hmm. Purpose is the reason why we exist. The reason why the church exists. Man, and of course, the number one reason, I mean, why did Jesus come to the earth? It says in Luke seek chapter 16, to seek and save that, that which was lost. That should be the number one passion yeah. that every one of us have. Mm-hmm. All of our gifts, all of our passions should be submitted to his number one passion. If you're a business person, submit it. How can my business fulfill that number one passion? How can my artistic gift fulfill, help fulfill that purpose? How can my hospitality gift help fulfill it? How, what, how can what I've got help fulfill Christ's number one purpose. That's what brought him to earth, wasn't it? That's what caused him to go to the cross. That's what caused him to resurrect from the dead. Glory to God is because he wanted to see each and every one of us saved, born again, and live a life with purpose. It's wonderful to have purpose in your life, isn't it? You know, I don't know about you, but to tell you before I was saved, you know, we had no purpose. You know, and after you've gone around the world a few times, you realize, man, there's got to be more to life than this. Isn't that right? Yeah. You know, you go out one night, get drunk, you, uh, you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, don't know what you did last night. Huh? And, you think, and you do that too many times, and then you say, well, what is life all about? There's got to be an awful lot more. Well, there is. Yeah, God has a purpose, a plan for each and every one of us. In fact, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I've got a good plan for yes. your life. It's a plan to do you good, not a plan to do you evil. It's a plan to give you a future, and it's a plan to give you hope. Isn't that great? Sure it is. Now, unity of purpose. That's where we're all, you know, purpose, we all all see the same thing. You know, I, I put here number two is this. Unity in diversity. Vision is a seeing word. Passion is a feeling word. You know, what? we we all need to see the same thing, but we all don't need to feel the same way. Passion helps give direction to your gifting. You know, and the gifting God gives you, you're, you're excited about that. Yeah. And there's a passion that you have for it. Yeah. Whether it's music, whether it's children, whether it's missions, whether it's business, whether it's politics, whether it's world vision, whatever it may be. I tell you, this passion, passion gives direction to your gifting. So vision is a seeing word. It's a little bit like soccer. In soccer, you know, all of your team of football, the whole team needs to see the same thing. They look down that field, what are they all seeing? Yeah, they're seeing, they're seeing, they're seeing a goal score. Man, we're going to score goals in, in this match. Yeah, we're going to score two or three goals. That's what we all see, right? But we all have a different position, don't we? All got a different position. And, and we have a passion for our position. This is what we know we can play best. And we have a passion for this. And, you, and, and what happens is you get everybody, we see the same thing, but we feel different. I feel the goalkeeper's the most important position. I feel the center forward's the most important position. I feel the winger is, you know, the wing left, wing right wing. No, you all feel this is the most important. And you should. If you lead in worship, you should feel the worship is the most important. If you've got a life group, the life groups are the most important. You know, the hospitality, hospitality is most important. <coughs> I tell you, there's something powerful about that. It's God's plan. Yeah. It's God's design. It's the way it works. Unity of purpose. We have a common God-given purpose. And then unity in diversity. Vision is a seeing word. Passion is a feeling word. The best teams that you make up are made up of, up of people with complementary giftings, aren't they? Yeah. You know, unity and diversity. The complementary giftings like a soccer team or any kind of team. I mean, they're all different positions. But there's one goal. Even in marriage, I mean, look at marriage. I mean, opposites tend to attract, don't they? (laughs) I see a few smiles here. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I can can understand that one. Yeah. (laughs) She's totally different to me. (laughs) Not just because she's a woman or because he's a man. No, but there's... There's passions on the inside of us and giftings on the inside of us. And you know, I, I mean, when, when the opposites attract, you know, it's designed that way on purpose. Yeah. So that you can supply strength to one another in their areas of weakness. Yeah, You've got gifts your partner doesn't have. Because yeah. you're different, right? 
You know, and so, this is why it says, work it out, two are better than one. They receive a good reward for what? Their labor. Their labor. I mean, you've got to work at this. I want to draw the best out of my wife. I want her gifts to become mine. She wants my gifts to become hers. That means we've got to work at it. You know, and, and it works that way. I'm much better now after being married to my wife for 45 years. <laughs> huh? Proverbs 27, 17, it says, Iron sharpens iron. So does a man's, a man's countenance, so does a man's sharpen the countenance of his friend. <laughs> it knocks all the rough edges off, doesn't it? When we first got married, I called her Sandy, she called me Buffy. She would sand me down, I'd buff her up. <laughs> But we both became better. You see, you know, see, some people, you know, I mean, people, some people get divorced because they're, they're, they're different. That's God's plan. you just got to work it out. Yeah. It takes a lifetime, but hey. I <laughs> 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 yeah, see, so in marriage, you know, you get to know one another so well. You know, I, I can make my wife madder quicker than anybody else. <laughs> but I'd be foolish to do that, wouldn't I? <laughs> You know, everybody has a, a mad button, a glad button, and a sad button. I know how to press the sad button, and she'd be crying. I'd know how to press, press the mad button, and she'd be flying high, ready to hit me on the head with a frying pan. <laughs> huh? now, but I also know how to, how to press the glad button. There's a glad button. You know, and I, I, some people are really stupid when it comes to this, you know. I mean, uh, all the while pressing the mad button. Poo! You know, poo! And then this one. <laughs> Throwing the dinner plate at one another. And <laughs> huh? Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Just work it out. <laughs> well, how do we do that? Yeah. Two are better than one. They receive a good reward for their labor. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken, huh? Yeah, man, you get husband and wife and Jesus in the center. Man, amazing how strong a marriage can become. And how much good you can do for a multitude of people. See, this is why it's important you marry right, isn't it? You know, you want to marry the right person. Not just anybody. I want to get the right one. You know, if you're married, then you've got the right one. <laughs> so, anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Unity in diversity, right? I mean, it's diversity, isn't it? You know, we have the same in the church. Everybody's different. We've got one vision, we all see the same thing. But we all have different giftings, different passions. There's always somebody in the church that loves to do what you hate. All you've got to do is find out who they are <laughs> and give them a job. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's amazing. It's wonderful. The body of Christ is wonderful. It's made up of all different kinds of parts. Yeah, it says God sets you in the body, what? As, as it pleases him. Not as it pleases you. Well, I want to be a mouth. I want to be a, a, a hand. No, maybe you're a foot. God sets you in the body as it pleases him. I don't want to be a foot. You know, nobody sees feet, do they? You know, they just stick it in a sock and push it in a boot. You never see it for the rest of the day. I want to be a hand. Huh? I want to be a pretty part. No, I tell you what, God has got a place for you. The, his, the place that he has for you is the best. Yeah, He's designed you specifically yeah. to function in a specific role. Unity and diversity. Look at this passage of scripture here. John 13, 35. You know Jesus took 12, didn't he? Took 12 men. Started with 12, then 70, then 120. And he made world changers and history makers out of them. They weren't that way when they met, when they met him. But he turned them. He molded them. He modeled their life. Molded them. Made them. Transformed them. Until they were world changers and history makers. That's what he wants to do with us. It really is. So renovate your life. Even your mother won't recognize you. Huh? That's what he does. Glory to God. And uh, <laughs> so, the uh, 
unity and diversity. John 13, 35, it says, A new commandment I give you, Peter, Thomas, Simon, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now, now look, at the, look at the diverse group that he put together. Here you've got impulsive Peter, and they put him with doubting Thomas. Huh? I mean, hey, you two guys get along. Well, we're totally opposite. This guy don't believe anything. And this guy steps, he goes this to the extremes in faith. How can we get along? Love one another. And then, you, and then you've got Simon the Zealot, right? He was, an, he, was, he was the extreme patriot. And they put him with Matthew, the tax collector, who's like a betrayer of Israel. Yeah. They put the two of them together. Okay, I hate this guy. I hate it. No, no, you're going to love him. Huh? You're in the same body. You've got to love him. You know? And then, and then you've got James and John, the sons of thunder. The two of them. Man, I mean, they weren't that loving at the beginning. I mean, they, Jesus sent them down into Samaria. He says, Master, it doesn't look like they're going to receive the message. Should we do like Elijah did? Call fire down from heaven? Huh? Yeah. And Jesus said, no. I didn't come to kill them. I came to save them. <laughs> huh? Yeah. See, see, they wanted to kill them. No, no, these guys, let's just kill them. Let's wipe them out like Elijah did. Yeah. That's New Testament now. <laughs> You know, so he put them in the mix too. And then you throw a Judas in there too. No, you see, so now get along by this. If you guys are getting along and love one another by this, all men are going to know that you're my disciples indeed. This is a miracle. Huh? Beautiful. I've never seen anything like that. Well, you know, well, you can see it in church, can't we? Can we? <laughs> but we should do. No, it's amazing. It's amazing the people you can't stand can become the people that you love the most. But you have to spend a bit of time to get to know one another. Don't you? Find out who's in the body. And then, there's, I tell you, there's always somebody in the body that has your miracle. Yeah, really. There's needs that we all have. Somebody in the body's got your miracle. You know, you, hey, you're going bankrupt. You need some counsel and advice. There's somebody in the body got the exact answer for you. I'm struggling physically. Somebody in the body's got the right answer for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. There's somebody in the body, you know, that, that has been through what you're going through now. Come on. Amen. And they can show you the way out of it and the way through it because they've stuck close to Jesus and came through it themselves. So there's unity of purpose. There's four areas of unity that will guarantee your success in life. They'll guarantee the, your love, joy, and peace, and sanity. <laughs> and, and, so, and so number three is this, unity under attack. When all hell breaks loose, how do you react? Huh? I mean, this, this is when you find out who you are. This is when you find out the weaknesses in yourself, the weaknesses in your team, the weaknesses in your church. And there's tests, isn't it? There's tests. The devil will try and test you. God will test you. You know? God will test you for the good. The devil will test you, to test you for evil to destroy you. God will never test you for evil, but he will put you the, to the proof for good so that he can bless you the way he wants to bless you. And there's times that it happens when all hell breaks loose against an individual, against a church, right? Then what do you do? Look, at, look what King Saul's army did when they were attacked. In 1 Samuel 13 and 14, King Saul's army had four different reactions to crisis. Number one, it says there's a whole bunch of them hid in caves and holes. You know, they just, they saw the enemy come in and they hid. Then there's another whole group in verse 7, they ran away. And then in verse 21 in chapter 14 of 1 Samuel, it says there was a whole group that joined the enemy. Huh? The crisis came, the enemy's attacking the church. Right? Some hide, some run away, and then some join the enemy. And this is what happens. Man, now, they're the ones pointing the finger. Right? right? They, 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 they're the pointing finger at the church. Then that breaks the unity. It breaks, it breaks the anointing and the power that God wants to see released. You know? And, 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 and they're all wrong reactions. 
And then you see there's two guys in that group, just two of them. I mean, the enemy, it says they had 30,000 chariots. And, and, they, and it says the, the, the soldiers and the warriors were like the sand of the seashore. You know, almost uncountable. Mm-hmm. And, and these guys only had one sword between them. There was not one sword, only one, two swords. Saul had one and, uh, and uh, Jonathan had the other. That's between the whole 6,000 of the Israelites. And so they won one little battle and then all the army came out in force against them. Everybody's trembling, including King Saul. They're all trembling. And then Jonathan snuck away. Remember that? Jonathan snuck away with his armor bearer and he got one sword. Him and his armor bearer. He said, let us go up to them. We'll go up and show ourselves to them. <laughs> 30,000 chariots and, uh, you know, and an army. Is this. And, he says, and he gets on the, at the cliff and then he says, I tell you what, he says to his armor bearer, I tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm, if I, if I'll, I'm going to shout out. Because they've seen them. They said, look, the Israelites are coming out of their holes. There they are, there's two of them. And then he cries out from the top of the mountain. He says, come on down to us. And, 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 and they, they said, no. And then he says, well, we'll come up to you. And this is what he says, if they say, we'll come up to you. If, if they say yes, when we come up to them, we're going to go up. He said, well, we'll come up to you. They said, come out. And so the two of them, <laughs> one sword between them, went up against all of these, all of these uh, Midianites, thousands of them. And then they started slaying the Midianites, two of them. Because uh, Jonathan said this. He said, God can save by few or by many. You know, it doesn't matter with him. There's two of us, but I tell you, you and God are a majority, yes. aren't you? You know, Amen. I tell you, if God's against you, it doesn't matter who's for you. Right. If God's for you, it doesn't matter who's, who's against, against you. you. Yeah. Yes. Does it? you got God on your side. Yeah. You don't need everybody. You just need God on your side, and you and him are a majority. I tell you, that's difficult to believe, but it works. You see all the stories in the Bible where they stood fast, standing on God's word, standing on God's truth, and God came through in miraculous ways. And you see that there, uh, Jonathan and his armor bearer. And of course, you, 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 you see your, uh, tremendous stories throughout the whole scripture, uh, everywhere, when there was attack, under attack, how that they stood, they withstood. Yeah. You know the Roman armies when they come under attack? Remember what the Roman armies would do? They'd have a shield. And the shield had a hook on it. And so what they would do when the armies, armies were coming against them, I mean, they'd stand in a line initially and push forward. But then if they saw they were losing, they would form a circle. And they'd get the shield, they'd stick it in the ground, got a hook on it, hook to this one, and 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 hook to this one, hook to this one, until they had this big circular metal surroundings, like a metal wall. And then they'd shine up their... their, 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 their their, their shields so they would blind the enemy they would be blinded and it would be an impregnable wall and they would stand there glory to God and it was their protection I tell you what when we're under attack we need to link our arms together Amen. don't we Amen. in the church there's times when all hell comes against the church mm-hmm. it really is I tell you this time remember that little village in uh, Judges chapter 18 I think it's verse 25 where it says a little village called Achish and, uh, and it was peaceful, and it was quiet. And then the enemy saw it, and they came in, and then they took the city. And it says, they took the city because they had no ties with any man. They didn't have any strong ties with any man. Therefore, there was no deliverer to help them. I tell you, there are times in every church when it's going great. I tell you, there's times in every church when it's going great and you're standing there, it's full of joy, full of victory. You're getting some real great wins. But I tell you what, there's other times when all hell breaks loose against you and I tell you, it can be a very tough time when all of a sudden you, you get attacked from, for, with finances, you get attacked with, with accusations, you get attacked with, with uh, pressures of every different kind, relational pressures. And you know what? What do you do? Do you run away? No. Do you hide? No. Do you accuse others? No. What do you do? you got to knit your these shields together and stand together and begin to push forward. Man, we stand together, we push forward until we win. Glory to God. We don't roll over and play dead, do we? Oh, we shouldn't do. No, we should stand with one another and, uh, so that we can win together. A win for one is a win for you all. 
A loss for one is a loss for you all. We weep when they weep. We rejoice when they rejoice. A a win and a celebration for one is a celebration for us all. And we should look at it that way. Because you're bone of my bone, you're flesh of my flesh. You get hurt, I get hurt. I get hurt, you should get hurt. And you feel it, you feel the pain. You know, we don't rejoice when somebody in the body loses. Do we? No, we want everybody to win. And so, the fourth area of unity is unity in advancement. Unity in advancement. So we've got unity of purpose. We've got unity in diversity. We've got unity under attack. But how about unity in advancement? Do you know it's harder to move together than it is to stand together? Huh? Yeah, I mean, now we're going to move together. We're going somewhere together. We're going to advance. We're going to take some territory. Man, we're going to, we're going to win some souls. We're going to raise up some leaders. We're going to plant some churches. We're going to buy some buildings. We're going to, we're going to start all kinds of outreach ministries. We're going to do something together. We're not just going to sit here on our dairy air. Like my wife says. I'm not sure what that is yet, but <laughs> she says it all the time. <laughs> No, we're not going to do that. We're going, to, we're going to advance. Look at this in First Chronicles 12, 38. It says, all these men of war, this is David's army, all these men of war, look at this, who could keep ranks, came with a loyal heart to make David king over all of Israel, and all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. I tell you, that's powerful. I tell you, Today, we come together not to make David king. We come together to make Jesus Lord, don't we? We want Jesus to have dominion from sea to shining sea. We want Jesus to be our Lord and our king, don't we? Glory to God. He's number one. And he's, 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 we want to be on his side. And we want to work together with him to, to raise the standard of righteousness in our nation. To fight off evil and wickedness. And then make sure the church gets back to full strength. Don't we? We want the church to be restored to full strength. Why? Because God doesn't want any to perish, but he wants everyone to come to the knowledge of salvation. And I tell you, we want the church restored to full strength. So what does full strength look like? The book of Acts, isn't it? The book of Acts is is the church. It's, 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 it's It's the first outpouring. The light outpouring, but in the latter days, it says there'll be the, the, the latter rain and the former rain, both together, it says in James chapter 5. Both together in the same town, so that there can be a harvest of souls, an end time harvest of souls. Now, I tell you what, we've all got to get revived first. Do you know in Psalm 119, I mean, I, I, counted, just, I counted nine times, where Paul, David said to himself, Lord, revive me. According to your word. Lord, revive me according to your promise. Revive me according to your judgment. Revive me according to your kindness. That could have been in one day. When do you need revived? All the time. Well, I tell you what, when you start to feel you're losing your joy, you're losing your passion, you're losing your fire, you're losing your hunger for the word of God, you're losing the hunger for church and ministry, you're losing, losing your passion for souls. I tell you, then you need revived. Yeah. Revives when somebody's dying, right? When somebody's dying, I mean, you give them artificial respiration. <laughs> and you keep pumping them. Is he going to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they start breathing. Yeah, I mean, hey. I tell you, that's... I think there's a, in a, a lot of churches, a lot of people need some artificial respiration. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Breath of life. Isn't that what Elisha did for that young boy that was dead? He got on top of his body and he breathed into him. And then eventually he got up and coughed. And he was alive. I tell you what, revive us again. I tell you, revive us. I want to be revived back to full strength. What is full strength? Well, you look at the book of Acts. Full strength, Peter's shadow healed the sick. Handkerchiefs from the apostle Paul's body cause devils to come out and the sick and the blind to be healed. Man, whole cities were saved. Yeah. Dorcas's body was raised from the dead. I mean, Lazarus was dead after he'd been dead for four days. Mm-hmm. He stinketh. Come forth, Lazarus. Huh? Yeah. I think there's quite a few like that today. They've been dead. 
they've been dead in the church, you know, for quite a while, and they stinketh. Oh, yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> Come forth! <laughs> and then he jumps out of the grave, still bound, in his grave's clothes, isn't he? Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. I tell you, there's a lot that are bound in graves clothes. They've been dead for four days. Some for four weeks. <laughs> some for four years. But thank God. I tell you, nothing too hard for God, right? right. There's nothing too hard for God. He can do the impossible. What is impossible with man is possible with God. And then he says, all things are possible to who? To them that believe. Some people say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, don't worry about it. It'll never happen to you. Huh? No, if you want, if you want to see the miracles, you better start believing. You better start believing in the God that created this universe. He created you. He knows how to prosper you. He knows how to heal you. Yeah. knows how to deliver you. He knows how to do everything you've always wanted to do. He knows where you are. He knows who you are. Yes. And he knows what's the best place for you. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's time. It says in Romans chapter 13, Knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when you believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore put on the armor of light, the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, hey, now is the time. Now's the time. I tell you, you talk about a time. I tell you, if there's any time we need waking up, it's now. With the stuff that's happening around the world and in this country and in Europe and throughout the whole world. I mean, stuff's happening around the world that's never happened before. And I tell you what, we need to wake up. up. We need to wake up. Touch your neighbor like I say, wake up. Wake up. up. Wakey, wakey. (laughs) It's time to wake up. It's time to rise up. It's time to stand up. Glory to God. And it's time that we all took our gifts and talents and abilities and passions and we put them into the mix for a commitment to gospel teamwork. Huh? Isn't that right? Yeah, everything. We just put it into the mix. I put my gift in, my gift in, my gift in, my gift in, my talent in, my ability in, my money in. Whatever you've got, you put it in to the mix for a commitment We to gospel teamwork. Striving so the gospel can go around the world. Amen. Glory to God. You, I mean, I thank God that somebody reached me. Yeah. And thank God that somebody reached my wife. I'm glad, thank God somebody reached Will and Barbie and Michael and Sam. Yeah, somebody reached us. You know, somebody, somebody went out of their way, didn't they, to, to really share yes. the gospel with you. Yes. And they could have been rejected. Mm-hmm. You know, but they, would, they, they were persistent. Mm-hmm. And we have to be like that too. Thank you, Lord. I mean, hey, now is the time. And now it is thy time to awake, awake out, out of sleep. sleep. Yeah. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. And, ah, I tell you what. I mean, you see all the signs all around us. We really do. They're everywhere. Yeah. I tell you what, let's make a difference. Oh, yes, Lord. There's, there is going to be, you know, it says in the last days, it says that many are going to depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. But then at the same time, same period of time, it says in Acts chapter 2, it says in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit in all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Yes. Young men will have visions. Amen. Old men will have dreams. And on my hand means I'll pour out of my spirit, says the Lord. Two things going to happen. And the choice is ours, which side we're going to be on. Oh, Are you going to be on the yes. side that's going to fall, fall asleep and then fall away and, uh, and then criticize the church? Or are you going to be on the side that begins to rise up and say, I want that. I want that. God's got something for me. I want to be part. I want to be part of the, uh, of the, of the on fire for the Lord group. I want to be part of that. Glory to God. I think you, how many want to, how many want to be that? Oh, yeah. I don't know about you. I mean, hey. I mean, there's nothing great about being lukewarm. Is there? No, it's a terrible place to be. Jesus said he'd spew you out of his mouth. Phew. Wow. That's terrible, isn't it? You know, no, what we've got to do is start fanning that flame. Keep the fire alive. Fan the flame. Fuel the flame. He makes his servants a flame of fire. Glory to God. That's what we want. 
a flame of fire. And so, Father, I say thank you for it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Father, even in this place tonight, we thank you, Lord, that you are here tonight. And I thank you, Lord, for an outpouring of your spirit upon each and every one of us. Lord, you said we're, we're, we're in unity. It's a place where you can command your blessing. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we're getting into unity this weekend. Why don't we just all stand together? I tell you, we're getting into unity this weekend. And, Lord, we're believing, Lord, that the anointing of God, we're going to get a fresh anointing of your Spirit come upon each and every one of us in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. And I thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. Why don't you just join your hands right across? Just join your hands right across. I tell you, there's something about this. You know what? Just join your hands. This, it's like you're connecting now with the body of Christ. We're connecting with the body of Christ. Just connect. Everybody connect with somebody. I tell you, we are connecting. I tell you, there's, there's, there's some of you here that are real strong right now. There's some that are weak. But Father, I'm praying that, Father, the anointing flows from the strong to the weak. And Father, I thank you for that in the wonderful name of Jesus. And Father, let there be a supernatural strength that flows through this body. I pray for healing grace. I pray for saving grace. I pray for delivering grace. I pray, dear Lord, for grace to prosper. I pray for grace to find, Father, their place in the body of Christ. And Father, I just say thank you for that in the wonderful and powerful and mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, Stuart, I I just, I'm I'm so happy to see you here. I thought about you quite a few times, you know, uh, since I was here last time. And I just, I just see you coming back. And I see you up there again with the music. And I think it's great. I tell you, there's something coming alive in you. Mm, There is. There's something coming alive in you. And I believe God wants to make it a flame of fire. You know, right now it's the flame, but it's not that burning so bright. I tell you what, God wants to fan that. He wants that flame to burn up within. Uh, Father uh, Stuart, in Jesus' wonderful name. And there's people watching you right now. There is. There's people around you that are watching you. Mm. And I tell you, they're watching how you are. And some are going to say, oh, well, he's probably just going to, you know, just be on the background again. No, this time, this time you're coming to the forefront. Amen. Don't miss out on what God's got for you. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, this is a new day. It's a yes. new hour. Hallelujah. You know, with Pastor Michael here now, this is, another, this is another new day. Thank God for all that Pastor Will and Bobby have done. The church wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. But I tell you what, they're releasing it the right way to, to their spiritual son. They really are. And I'm real happy about this, so are they. And, and I believe that there's a place for everybody yes, in this. Amen. There's nobody left out in this. There really isn't. Everybody is part of this body. And I tell you what, if you are, then make sure that you really receive this young man. And make sure you bless and thank Pastor Will and Barbie for all that they've done in keeping this church together and growing this church and then being willing to raise up this young man and turn it over. A lot of pastors wouldn't do that. A lot of pastors couldn't do that. But Will and Bobby have done it. And I thank God for that. Father, let each one feel the strength. Do you feel the strength? Now, I tell you, there's something about being connected. I tell you, why don't you come a bit closer and just link arms? Just come link arms and you get a bit closer. A bit closer if you can. Just link arms like this. Link your arms. No, I tell you what. See, now, this is stronger. This is where you really get connected, isn't it? That's where you really get connected. Now, now, now look at this group here. Just come right over here. This, this group, make a circle facing out. Just, just make... Just no, that's the other way, like that. Just make a circle facing out. Here, everybody. No, no, you, you're okay, just the way you were. Just, just, now come like this. Just come over here, and then come right around here, Will, and Barbie and Jane. Just come right around. Oh, no, it's, uh, no, that's the wrong that's, way. That's facing in, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so okay. Everybody turn around. <laughs> everybody. This, this army is just learning. <laughs> we're in training. So that we know what to do when it really happens. Hey. Well, okay. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm the pastor. (laughs) You're right. Now, they're protecting me. Right? Hey, Stuart, you come try and get in here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no.
Oh yeah, I mean, hey, your weak spots are revealed when, when the enemy comes. There's, there's one that ran away. Ran away, run away. Ran away. One hid by that, by that, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's another one went and joined the enemy. Who's the enemy? Stuart. Okay, Stuart's the enemy. You go and join the enemy. Yeah, and then there's just Jonathan and his armor bearer left. Huh? Yeah, Jonathan and his armor bearer left. Glory to God. Hey, there's a few of them. We've got more than one. <laughs> you know, but hey, you know what, what we're doing? We gotta, we've got to be part of a winning team. Yes. Yes. We want to be winners. Yeah, on a There's winning nothing worse team. than being losers, is there, on a losing team? Yeah. No, we want to be winners on a winning team. Yes. Yeah, you can be seated. Thank you, Lord. Seated? Yeah, you can be seated. Yeah. Awesome. Glory to God. Do you know what I woke up singing this morning? What? More love, more power, more of you in my life. She woke up this morning singing more love, more power, more of you in her life. Isn't that good? How many, how many other people woke up singing that? <laughs> huh? More love, more power, more of you in my life. Isn't that what you want? Don't we all want that? Sure. You know, now, you know, you know Jesus, it says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, it says that the first Adam was a living being. But the second Adam, Jesus in Christ, was a life-giving spirit. We are created in his image. You know, now you, now you, and then you become a life-giving spirit. You know, and that means that means that same life is in you, and God wants to transfer that through you. A life-giving spirit. Receive life in Jesus' mighty name. You know, I just believe people receive life when we shake their hands. Believe that, that life is going to be imparted. Why? Because you're a life-giving spirit along with Jesus Christ. His spirit's in you. He's a life-giving spirit. And therefore, we can become a life-giving spirit. Yeah. You can bring life where there was no life. Amen. Health where there was no health. Yeah. Strength where there was no strength. Yes, Glory to God. And I tell you what, I believe, that, I believe that this church is on the verge of a breakthrough. I really do. A real breakthrough. A major breakthrough. I tell you what, there are seasons that you go through. That are, there's seasons of lack. There's seasons of attack. There's seasons of advancement and there's seasons of fruitfulness. I believe you're, you're moving into that season of advancement right now. This is what you see in this weekend is a season of advancement. Yeah, it, there's advancement that's taking place and people are going to find their place. And then I believe it's going to be a season of fruitfulness. Wonderful. There's going to be fruit in each and every individual's life like never before. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance and faith. And I believe that with all of my heart. Thank you, Father God. And so you get ready. I mean, you stay on the right side. Don't get on the wrong side. Huh? One door and only one. Do you ever sing that in Sunday school? One door and only one. And yet it's sides of two. I'm on the inside. Which side are you? I remember singing that in England when I was a little kid. I tell you, so Sunday school teachers, you know, I mean, hey, when you're teaching kids, it's amazing what they remember. It really is. I mean, I wasn't that interested in Sunday school when I was a kid, but I still, still remember some of those songs. You know, and uh, there were some really nice teachers there. Even though I only went once in a while. <laughs> and I'd take the thruppence for myself. <laughs> My mother would give me thruppence to put in the, three pennies to put in the, in the basket. And I'd think, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> I can buy an ice cream with that. <laughs> Did you put it in? Yes, mum. But, but I wasn't a very good boy. I was a bad boy. Not like you. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, I tell you what, we're going to have a good weekend this weekend. Yes, we are. You know, Sunday morning, I'm, I'm going to speak. 